Top of the day to you, my loves. Top of the day to you. It is 1.48 a.m. on Thursday, April the 28th. And I just did some light studying. I wanted to look up a couple of things. And I just took a shower. And I'm feeling all refreshed. And I'm laying flat on my back, palms up. Relax pose. And I'm just sitting here. The thought started in the shower. Hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. Before I get into it, let me welcome you. Let me welcome you to the channel where it is all about healing and living our life to the fullest. But in order to live our lives to the fullest, we have to heal old wounds, childhood traumas. You know, traumas in general. Doesn't necessarily have to be childhood. Okay, I hope you are well. I hope you guys are doing as well as you can be. I wish you nothing but peace of mind. That is the utmost. I, I would love to wish you all the riches of the world and the love of your life and the car, your dreams and all that stuff. But if you don't have peace of mind and God gave you all those things, we would eventually screw them up because we're, we're functioning out of fear. And that's what we're working our way out of. We've been traumatized intentionally, on purpose. Know that. Please know that. Please know that. It is not by accident. It was by design. And that's a whole nother topic. But what the thought came to me is one of the ways that a narcissist will use your own gifts against you is by using your loyalty to their advantage but to your disadvantage during these tough healing times when you're coming out of a narcissistic spider's web and you're realizing that black magic was done on you listen it's gonna be hard to still have love in your heart but please keep it in your heart you may have some dark days and i understand understand and overstand that but find love and the way we find love is by healing our own trauma and finding love for ourselves because the outward affection and outward emotions and the outward physical contact that we really want to give someone else, we should be really focusing it on ourselves when we're going through the healing process. And that has been one of the hardest things for me because I love people. I didn't know that I was giving so much out and not getting enough and not replenishing myself. Okay. So not only do I wish you peace of mind, I wish you healing and love for your heart and some joy in your soul. But one of the ways that I uncovered, because I uncovered two narcissistic, two undercover narcissists, and they were the least, when I tell you guys, they were the least to be expected. It's not the ones that are outright. It's not the misogynistic men it's not the men it's not the women and men that hate you it's it's not the ones that are outright with their disdain for you it's not them undercover means undetected until they are discovered and then they're no longer undercover but it took me years and it wasn't until I was on my spiritual path and really and truthfully and to be honest, and this is a whole nother topic, but Tarot really exposed them, it helped me to expose them. They confirmed what I thought and what I was feeling. But then they also tied some other things together. But now I don't watch it because that was when I was healing and I was scared and I was didn't know what was going on with me and around me. 
And when all hell broke loose, so I tell you, when all hell broke loose, y'all, it broke loose and it uncovered what was hidden from me. God put the spirit in those tarot readers for me to understand, overstand, and understand what was going on with me. And yes, I know there are some that are corrupt. And yes, I know that there are some that use their gifts for evil and to spy on people and, and things of that nature. I do know that. But for the most part, yes, I know it hinders you. Understand and understand. Don't watch me. I'm going to start saying that in my videos. I want you to watch me, but don't continuously watch me. Because the goal is for you to be able to trust yourself, your own intuition, your own mind, your own thought process. And to trust your connection with God yourself. Okay? But it's hard when you're trying to heal and you're trying to find God and you think God is not listening. And I heard God throughout my journey and I seen the light in the darkest tunnel. I never lost sight of God, even though I thought he lost sight of me, but that wasn't it. You know, they always say the teacher is always quiet when the student is taking an exam. And the only way to do that is by sitting still. But one of the ways that they, that they Jedi mind trick you is using your loyalty against them. And as I was taking the shower, Two instances from both undercover narcissists came to mind, and I'm going to share with you. From the male one, I didn't know that he had, he was, a uh, he had some sexual ways that I knew nothing about. Okay. And he had other women. And I thought he was so quiet. He was very intelligent. But I thought he was so quiet and just like, I really thought he was a poindexter, but he wasn't. He really wasn't. He was evil, but he, was, he wasn't as I thought he was. And one of the ways he got me to be loyal to him, even when he was deceiving me, because there was a time, and I wanted to reach out to a, a few of them, but I did not. If God wants it to be so, our paths will cross at some point in time on my journey. And that is when and will be the right divine timing to have a conversation with one of his victims who I know was young. And I believe he groomed her from a teenager because he used to write music for her and they used to do music and he let me listen to several of her songs and he he made them seem as if they were for me um and one time i was talking about makeup and he told me that she did makeup so I asked for her information because at the time I still trusted him and valued his opinion but what was so weird about it and I didn't question it because I compartmentalize my life too although I've never told someone this in my life I put it in the realm of compartmentalizing for whatever reason right but when he gave me the information he instructed me not asked me but he instructed me not to mention that I knew him. And at the time, I did think it was odd. I did. I really did. But it was him, and I didn't question it. I didn't question him. I questioned it in my own mind, but I didn't question him. And I know in my heart that she is probably a victim of his narcissistic spider's web as well. Um, I don't know if he told her things like he wanted to have a baby with her and wanted to travel, you know, around the world with her and invited her to Paris. I don't know if he did those things. But she was an impressionable teenager that just wanted to sing. I knew that much. And knowing what he did in my life with the black magic and having all my pictures and, you know, all that stuff and going to theology school and 
using dark magic and all that stuff, I am sure she has fell victim to it. If she knows it or not, I do not know. So that was the first incident. And there are more of those types of things, but that was the one that jumped out at me when I was in the shower. And then of the woman narcissistic, narcissistic spider's web, I recognized a pattern where she would say certain things like her sister-in-law slash best friend would say things about me, but that was just gauging my reaction to the question she had that she wasn't comfortable voicing to me. And she also was one that took my loyalty to her to not question her other friend when I had every right to because I spent as much time with her as I did with the one I called Sister Girl. But I didn't because we didn't have that relationship and my loyalty was to the other, you know, my Sister Girl at the time. When actuality, in both scenarios, guess what? Can you guess it? The loyalty should have been to my dang self. <laughs> it should have been. The loyalty should have been to me. Because I had questions for both parties. And I should have asked them. I should have asked them. But out of some misguided, because it was misguided. I'm not saying your loyalty it's a curse. It's a gift and a curse. It's only a curse when people try to use it against you and when they have used it against you to gaslight you and to isolate you and to keep you naive to who they are. Right? But the loyalty should have been to myself first and foremost. So if I had questions, I should have honored myself and asked those questions. If I had concerns, I should have honored myself and voiced those concerns. If I had an opinion, I should have been courageous enough to voice my opinion regardless on what anyone had to say. Lessons in my confessions. If you are currently in a situation where you are not comfortable doing any one of the three or four mentions, it's time for you to take a look at yourself and to start honoring yourself completely and wholeheartedly. And it will be a journey, my love, but you can do it. You can do it. And I'm not just saying that to be saying that, but I know what I've went through. And I know if you clicked onto this channel, if you were divinely guided to this channel, if you were energetically pulled to this channel, then, and you, this is your first message. First, let me tell you, welcome. But you are a warrior. You are a warrior. It may not even feel like it. Trust me, I know. Listen, the other day I was just like, I, I don't feel like a warrior. And nine times out of ten when I say I don't feel like a warrior is because I'm crying. Or I feel a certain sadness. Or I feel uncomfortable. But guess what warriors do when they feel that way? I was under the misguided notion that warriors didn't feel that way. But if they're human, they actually feel that way. Unless they are robots, then they feel that way. If they, if they have a heart, and most warriors have hearts, that's why they do the fighting. And that's why they love so hard. That's why they fight. It's because they love so hard. And there are moments where it is warranted for you to cry. But there are moments when it's not because it's time for you to fight. If you ain't anything like me, when I was young, I used to fight and cry at the same time. So <laughs> I don't know why this feels any different, but it does. I just realized that I did. When I got mad as a kid, I cried because I was so mad. I was so angry. Ugh. 
I really was, that I would fight you while I was crying. But the tears didn't automatically come. That's funny, because I just realized that and remembered that. So why is me crying now any different? It's just now I'm not fighting nobody, but I am, I'm fighting myself. Because I'm trying to fight these tears. <laughs> but you can't fight them. They are a part of emotion. And as we feel, we heal. As we feel, we heal. You have to feel. Oh, and I know it's nerve-wracking when it is not the emotions and the feelings that we love. Like love. But love sometimes hurt when it's unrequited. And when it's disrespected, and when it's not honored, and sometimes we feel that polarity, but sometimes we feel genuine love. Sometimes we feel genuine love. And the other day I was sad, and this is not to make you sad, this is to uplift you is I was taking stock in my closest relationships. And I don't actually believe I was genuinely loved. I may have been, but because I didn't honor myself and my voice, it feels like I wasn't. I was genuinely loved as best possible as they could. It's not their fault that I that I accepted and I diminished my voice. It's not their fault. I really believe that in the beginning it may have been, but just like with junkies, when they get a drug, when they get a taste of your light, when they get a taste of your energy, they want more. And when they fall short, of themselves they need to replenish and so they drink from your well and the more they do it the more they get the, the more they get addicted and because you are an empath and because you feel you will pick up on that energy shift and so to keep it going they have to gaslight you to make you think that you're crazy that you're imagining things that you need help, you need to seek help, that what you witnessed didn't actually happen. What you're feeling, uh, you're not feeling that. What you saw, guess what? You didn't even see that, honey. You didn't see that. <laughs> They're going to try it. Hold to yourself. Stand in your truth. I had over 20 people trying to tell me that I didn't feel and see and like literally or didn't acknowledge. I'm talking about the whole clan. I had strangers that acknowledged me and my pain and what I was going through. And the people that watched me go through it and I told about it, didn't acknowledge it and still won't to this day to a certain extent. And I get why they won't because if they do that, then they have to acknowledge that they didn't love me and show affection and show caring emotions or none of that stuff as I did them. So they have to act like I lied about it or it didn't exist for me because then that excuses the fact that they didn't do it in their mind because it didn't exist. So yeah. You're not a hypochondriac. It's not all in your mind. You feel exactly what you're feeling. You saw exactly what you saw. You know exactly what you know. Now the hardest part is doing what you know you need to do. Because that means walking away from your old self. And when you walk away from your old self because you want better for yourself, that means you have to walk away from the old people that is attached to that old self because they will never let you ascend. They will never want you to get past them. And, and that's essentially how they're looking at it because you will not be vibing where they are. You are no longer interested in the things that you were interested in before. That is a shift, my love. You are elevating. You are seeking God, and God lies within you. 
because you were made in his image. You were made in God's image. You were made in his likeness. That means you can do all things. You can't do everything, but you can do all things. You can get up out of wherever you at. I know it may seem dismal, and trust me, I've had those days. I've had those days, and I recorded them, and I put them up for you to see that you are not alone. That is what my channel is about, to show people that they are not alone, to show women that they are not alone, to show men that resonate with my channel that you are not alone. I know I speak to the women mainly and mostly because I am a woman, and I experience womanly things, so, but that is not to negate men who are drawn to my channel. Men are gaslit too. Men are trying to, you know, been caught in women's narcissistic spiders web. Johnny Depp is one of them and Kanye West is number two. That is what it will look like if the people around you succeed in trying to drive you crazy. Except for they didn't try and drive, um, do Johnny Depp. She did, but it didn't work. She had one person. I don't know how many people in his life fell to the wayside. But you can see Kanye West. And what he really needs to do is he really needs to sit still. But his mind. His mind. It is not his own. And I know that feeling. And I am so thankful and grateful that I came out of it. And I'm so thankful and grateful that God saw a fit and my ancestors was like, listen, girl, girl, God was like, this is a no-no. And he called my ancestors to the rescue because I didn't know anything about them and I wouldn't have known anything about them if God hadn't brought them into my peripheral. Did I say it right? <laughs> peripheral? 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 Peripheral. Why well, I say peripheral? That was funny. Peripheral. <laughs> that was funny. Peripheral. Why well, I say peripheral? Why did I say it like that? That is hilarious to me. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? I know the word peripheral. Why did I say peripheral? I don't know. That was funny. I'm sorry, guys. My apologies. I'm not sorry, but that was funny. Anywho, anywho. <laughs> Please know you are not alone. Especially if you're on a journey in this healing path and you're doing it by yourself. I don't want to say you're doing it alone because I just said you're not alone. You're not doing it alone. You may be by yourself doing it, but you're not alone. You are surrounded by so much love loving energy your ancestors want you to succeed your ancestors and god want you to succeed why because when you succeed your ancestors succeed you are blood of their blood flesh of their flesh yeah you are you are your ancestors dreams manifested into this reality and you have a job to do just like i do and part of discovering what that destiny and what your job is is getting to know yourself and healing your trauma, unfortunately and fortunately. Unfortunately, because as humans in, and the way we have been bred, especially if you've been raised here in America for a length of time, you have so much to overcome, my love. But you can do it. And it will be so beautiful, but the beginning will be painful. Because your old self is dying and it will feel like death. Because everything around you, the veil will be lifted and the mask will be ripped off. And you will have no choice but to see reality for as it is for you and those around you. And when you do, it will be earth shattering. 
but it will also be groundbreaking. And then it all will also be a period of renewal when you are rebuilding the foundation of you on truth instead of lies and trauma and deceit. Namaste, Ashe, Masata. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved more than you know. You are more powerful, more than you feel. And you are more supported than you think you are at the moment. You really are. You can do it. You really can do it. I sit here almost three years later when I was a mess. When I say I was a mess, I was a mess. And I ain't gonna even say hot mess because you know when we say hot mess, you know, we imply we was still cute. Now I was still cute, but I was a mess, y'all. I was a mess internally in my brain. When I tell you five years ago, oh, y'all, when I tell y'all 2013, oh, y'all, y'all just don't even understand right now. But you will. You will. Because I was a mess. And you can watch those other videos to see that I was a mess. But I stay in here. I'm not a mess anymore. I have gathered a lot of my pieces and put together a pretty strong foundation of who I am internally and spiritually. My life that I have lived thus far does not define me. It's just a part of the makeup of this being. And I am slowly, to my dismay, to my chagrin, to my impatient self because that's basically what it is but I am grateful now that that's the thought that I used to have so I am going forcibly slow because in the beginning that was not how I rolled I was trying to get through it I was like okay I'm healed Okay, I'm healed. <laughs> okay, I dealt with that trauma. Okay, now what's next? Okay, I dealt with that. And then you'll realize that that same old wound will come back again. Two, three. And, and that's how it was for me. It was the craziest thing. And it's because it was embedded in you. So it's like peeling back an onion layer. Yeah, you peel back an onion layer and you get to the root of it. But you guess what? You got 20 more layers to go and they all stem from the same exact thing. <laughs> and I'm not laughing to be taking it lightly. I'm laughing because I promise you, I know. I was always like, okay, I dealt with that. I'm done. Let's move on to the next thing. And then when it come up again, I'm like, well, what happened? I thought I dealt with that. <laughs> And it's because there's layers to it. There's layers to it. Don't take yourself too seriously when you have breakdowns. Don't take yourself too seriously when you're crying in public. And I cry in public. I don't care what people think and what they say. Now, I don't do it often. But you know you have those moments where you just can't hold it back. Now, I'll do something to disguise. I ain't one of the ones because I don't like to be embarrassed. And I don't like, you know, I really don't like to be embarrassed. But, you know, I'll disguise it. Or most of the time I'm wearing glasses anyway. So, but yeah, sometimes you just can't hold back. And they just come when they're coming. Lately, they've been happy tears. Like I watch, I watched um, um, a mother-daughter duo sing a song, and I was just crying happy tears. In the beginning, it was you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know the word. I'll just describe what I was feeling. In the beginning, it was like, oh, you know, that's so beautiful. You know, I wish I could have experienced that closeness with my mom. And then it's like, okay, but then I wouldn't be who I am. And that's kind of living in the past and 
kind of living in old trauma because you can't, you know, have that. So why even think that thought? So then it became, oh, that is beautiful for them. Like, I know that there are people out there that did not experience what I experienced with my family, not just particularly with my mom. That was just one of the things that had triggered me that I spoke about. But it, it goes down the line. It, it's not just her. It was my dad. It was my siblings. It was my nieces and nephews. It was the great nieces and nephews. It was the cousins. It was the god sisters. Son. It was the god brothers. It, I mean, it was the friends. It was the lovers. Like it was everyone. Everyone, y'all. And it's um, it's it's amazing and incredible. And I'm like, there got to be somebody else out there like me. It can't just be me. It can't just be me that had everybody. I'm not talking about no one. Or I'm not talking about five people. I'm not talking about like ten. I'm talking about every one. That's three syllables, right? Every one. Three syllable word. I do another three syllable. Everybody. It was everybody. There was not one that lasted. There was not one that lasted that God did not reveal to me that did not have my best interest at heart. Do you know what that does to a person? Do you know what that does to a person when God reveals to you that no one in your closest vicinity, in your inner inner circle, actually loved you enough to just be like, hey, are you okay? And wanted to steal your light and steal, I mean, it's just, what do you think that could have, that could have shattered my heart. It could have shattered it. But it didn't. It didn't. It just allowed me to see people and to accept them for who they are and where they are at in their spiritual journey. And to know that everybody on my path is not going to resonate with me. And that doesn't mean I think of them any less. That just means that we are not on the same path. And wherever we have crossed paths and we are not on the same path, that means the, the journey ends there. That means I can't go with you and you can't go with me. And that's okay because we came together to learn lessons and gain blessings out of those lessons. And sometimes it's for a moment, a season, or a lifetime. And I thought that the people that I had around me were for a lifetime. And God was like, no, <laughs> basically. And it was a heart-wrenching no. It was gut-wrenching no. It was, it was disbelief no. It was like, and, and for the longest time, I didn't believe God. I didn't believe, even though I seen with my own two eyes, even though I felt with my own heart, even though I heard with my own two ears, I still just was like refusing to see. It was like, no.